This is the lock making engineer, and today I have something really exciting. These completely custom locks are designed to be unpickable. Although the truly exciting thing is that while making this, one thing led to another, and I ended up making a working front door. Why'd you make this? Can I look through the people? Where are the two locks? Is this door work? I designed this lock to be unpickable and invited some locksmiths to try to get through it. I thought that was the end of it, but this is my life now. In fact, it's getting kind of ridiculous. The time has finally come to send stuff to the lock picking lawyer. And I'm sending not one, but two locks. I have a totally new design that I think is even better. It has more pins, more parts, and should be even more unpickable. It was also even more of a pain to get working. The lock has eaten the key. If you haven't seen the video on the first lock or you've forgotten, let me get you up to speed in 30 seconds. Locks work by requiring you to set a series of pins to the correct height. There's millions of possible combinations of pins, which makes it nearly unguessable. Unfortunately, locks have small variations that make it possible to solve one pin at a time. I devised a lock which tests the pins away from the key so you can't test one pin at a time. If all the pins aren't set right, you have to start over. And remember, there's millions of possibilities. Have fun. I made the new lock because the original one just kind of bugged me. These cantilevered pins are just the worst. They're only supported on one end, which makes them so weak. A little force and... This is why rich people live in houses that look like this. They're hard to make, so you know they're expensive. Normal locks for normal people support the pin on both sides. In fact, there's no gap at all. To break this pin, you have to shear it in half. Aside from being total weak sauce, these pins are totally custom. They're also gigantic. So you can only fit three in a lock, which makes it less secure. But even worse, you have to go out wearing a key that looks like this. You might as well grab this while you're at it. I figure if I'm gonna send the lawyer a lock, I better put my best lock forward. This lock isn't that, so it's time to make a new lock. These problems were not a surprise. I knew about them when I was designing the lock. I just didn't care. And that's because I was following a specific engineering process. When I started the project, I had no idea if a lock like this was even physically possible. The entire project was just figuring that out. This has a funny kind of bad design because it was the easiest possible way to prove the concept. Imagine if I was also trying to make it armored against physical attacks. It would be really hard to make modifications to an armored lock. This would have bogged me down and I probably wouldn't even have finished the lock. This is the idea behind my engineering process. Focus on the biggest problems first and ignore everything else. Since I got the first lock to barely work, now I can spend time trying to make it a better lock. After that, I might make it cheaper, add packaging, and then sell it. Although let's not get ahead of ourselves. So I almost have a design. I've been working on this for quite a while. What you're seeing here is Gen 3 of Lock V2. The first one I accidentally designed with microscopic parts. There's this problem where you can zoom in as much as you want when you're designing on the computer. Next thing you know, you're making parts like this. So I redesigned it, but it was way too complicated. We're not even gonna go there. I'm skipping the parts where I just stare at the computer for a couple days because that's boring. All right, third time really is the charm. It's still pretty complicated, but I think it can work. Before I dig in, remember that the way to pick a lock is to solve it one pin at a time. Imagine that we start with the inside of a regular lock. We make a copy of it, and then we remove the keyhole from the copy. The upper lock can't be unlocked because there's no way to put a key into it. Although I could remotely put a key into it if I transmitted the motion of the key through a series of pins like this. Although you still need to rotate the upper lock to unlock it. This is where the magic happens. If I don't connect the lower lock to anything, meaning if I twist it, nothing happens. The only thing that it can do is set the upper lock's pins. If I set the upper lock pins and then rotate the lower lock, when the lock is rotated, it can't reach the upper lock anymore. Now imagine there's a fairy inside the lock, and whenever the lower lock rotates, the fairy will twist the upper lock and see if the pins are set correctly. Because you can't touch the pins while they're being tested, there should be no way to pick the lock one pin at a time. This whole magic business is where things get really complicated. I don't have magic, so I had to do it the plebe way and devise a scheme to do everything that the magic bubble did with only the insertion and rotation of the key. Imagine that I connect the two locks with a gear. When the lower lock turns, the upper lock turns. This will allow me to unlock both locks, but it's still pickable. But if I took one of the gears out back and roughed it up, I could knock some of its teeth out. Now I can make the upper lock rotate only when the key is clear of the pins. This is equivalent to the fairy, but it has a major flaw. It doesn't relock the lock. 
when I take the lower key out, it just leaves the upper lock wherever. Another way I could link the two locks is with a little rod like this. When the lower lock rotates, the upper lock rotates. If I make one of the holes bigger so that there's play, the lower lock can't rotate the upper lock until it turns enough to bottom out the hole. This is just like the gear with missing teeth, except for that it locks the lock when it's done. And now for the real doozy of a problem. The lock pins are spring-loaded. If I lift them up and then rotate the key out of the way, they will immediately shoot back down. And unfortunately, the springs are pretty important. I checked. If I pushed into the side of a pin that I didn't want to drop down with another pin, I could wedge it in place. If I made the end of the lock pin a little ramp, I could slide a spring up onto it to lock it and slide the spring off to unlock it. We can put one of these on every pin and then move them together to lock all the pins at the same time. If you do this before the key stops supporting the pins, it'll keep them from dropping. Here's what the real part with all the springs in it looks like. We just need a way to push and pull on this when we rotate the key. Sounds like a problem for some difficult to calculate ramps. These ramps lock the pins just before the key loses contact and they unlock them when the key is ready to be removed. And that's all there is to it, though it is a lot of stuff, so let's recap. The key goes in, it pushes the upper lock pins from below, as the key rotates, it locks the pins in place using a series of spring-loaded pins. If all the pins are set correctly, the upper lock will unlock, allowing the lower lock to rotate and unlock your door. If you don't set all the pins right, it won't unlock, and you just have to try again. At least in theory. Let's see if these grand ideas actually work. Getting this lock made means tons of metal parts. If you want to learn more about this process, check out my CNC chainsaw. It's a weird way to make a key, but it works. I just spent several hours machining all these pins and I realized you can buy them for like a penny. It looks good, but does it work? And the answer is no. That's not good. Ugh. The lock has eaten the key. There was some metal where there shouldn't be metal. This is an easy fix, but the lock still doesn't work. This is a very annoying problem. I have basically a little block of metal with stuff going on inside of it that should unlock when I put this key in, but it doesn't. I can't see why it doesn't work. It could be anything. And this is what they call integration hell. This is where nothing works and you try to figure out what life choices got you into this mess. Not being able to see inside this lock is just killing me. The whole point of this lock was to make it impossible for a lock picker to figure out what they need to do to get the lock to unlock. I'm in the position of a lock picker right now where it won't unlock and I'm trying to figure out what I need to change to make it unlock. I've remade a bunch of parts that weren't quite right and I think I'm getting pretty close. All right, I've got a good feeling about this one. Oh, just kidding. Let's take the lock apart again and probably make more parts. All that you need to know about these springs is that they're very annoying and extremely important. Some say that I'm still making this part to this very day. I think this is gonna finally work. It works. It's about time. And it seems to be reliable, which is so cool. Finally. I came up with all these crazy parts. I spent weeks making them and trying to make them obey. After all that, you turn the key and it unlocks. So good. The mechanism's a little crunchy. It feels like a dollar store lock. I mean, it really feels terrible, but it works. I'm gonna call that good enough. Remember, the engineering process, we can make it feel good later. I think my favorite thing about this lock is the totally open keyway. It's just screaming, pick me. This lock is better, but it is still basically the definition of over-engineered. Let me show you. See? This is why I don't plan to sell it. Too complicated and expensive. It just doesn't feel right to send a bear deadbolt. I want this to be an accurate simulation of breaking into my house. I'm building a scale replica of my front door. Which of these will make it look the most expensive? 
Yeah, that didn't really work out. This is my favorite part of the whole project. Every single time. This may have been the most important requirement. Oh, we're just going to ignore this. These hinges could be my downfall. I can just see it now. I know it's not rational, but I love this. I am really excited to find out what's going to happen with this lock. I thought that it would be interesting to put in our predictions. I don't think he'll be able to get through either of them. Very optimistic. That's me. I think that there's a pretty good chance that he'll be able to get through at least one of them. I'm actually most worried about the second lock. The first one is so custom that he doesn't have any pre-existing things that he can throw at it. And so I'm worried that there's some tool that I've never heard of that he's going to just pull out of his bag and go in and just unlock it. I'm actually hoping that happens because it'll be more interesting and also it'll tell me something that I can do to make the lock stronger. I want it to be the strongest lock possible. This is the point of collaboration. We both bring different things to the table and the result is going to be something that neither of us could do by ourselves. If you think this is a competition of me trying to beat him or him trying to beat me, you just don't get it. <sighs> Bark once if you think he's gonna get through. All right. Looks promising. Very optimistic dog. Pucci. I'm at the point where I'm just adding random accessories to this door, so I think it's about time that I just send it off. There's a couple of potential attacks that I've realized since I made it, which I could fix, but I'm not going to. I'm leaving it in exactly the same state as the first video, including damage from the locksmith using the bump key. It's a little bit finicky, but it pretty much works. The only thing I care about is if you can pick the lock, not if you can break it with a hammer. There's actually some plastic parts inside of it that you could break pretty easily. There may or may not be some kind of prize on the inside if he manages to get through. I'm gonna go pack this up and send it out, but before I get to that, I wanna talk about this video sponsor. Why I'm doing the sponsorship at the beach will make sense in a second. I got really lucky. The sponsor for this video is KiwiCo. They are one of my most favorite companies because they're doing something really important. They're making building kits, they call them crates for kids, which are start to finish projects for kids to create something. And it teaches them how to be makers, how to be creative, how to be a scientist, and they are really, really good. The reason that I'm so lucky is that the in-laws just happened to bring KiwiCo crates for all the kids. The crates come with everything that you need, which is really good for us. We're at the beach, I have zero tools. I feel naked, I really don't like it. When I was little, I started with kits just like this. I learned so much about working with my hands, being creative, and just general problem solving. If there's someone that you care about, whether it's a kid or a relative or a friend, Consider this a really good investment in their future. All you have to do is go to kiwico.com slash stuff made here. You'll get 50% off your first crate from any line. They have a lot of different crates for different ages and interests. So check out kiwico.com slash stuff made here. You can also click on the link in the description. And when you do this, you'll be helping to support this channel as well. So thank you. Right, do you guys know how to use a razor blade? No. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. It'll keep you in the loop when I post new stuff, and it helps me out a lot. If you're interested in supporting these projects directly and getting some behind the scenes info, check out my Patreon. If this thing gets lost in the mail, I'm going to die. So it has been a month since I sent those locks out. And from what I'm hearing, they're giving the lock picking lawyer a real challenge. I told him to stop at nothing until he gets through these locks. So I'm curious, is it gonna be picking, a hammer, maybe something a little more powerful? I'll post a link to his video as soon as it's ready, but for now, you're just gonna have to wait. That's what I've been doing. Welcome to the club. Wait a second. I know what happened with the locks. I'm not gonna spoil it. What you need to do is go watch the Lock Picking Lawyers video. I'll link it somewhere, and I'll also put a link in the description. It was very fun working with him. I like him a lot, and I think you're gonna enjoy it. So, go watch it. I did a live stream for my second channel where I watch this video and give you kind of my director's commentary on hard things and interesting things. You should check it out, it's pretty cool.